How's it going, everybody? So if you're anything like me, you may have a few of these tool cases laying around. Anytime you buy a power tool or a set of sockets or something like that, they often come in these plastic cases. And for some reason, I can't seem to throw any of these away. I guess they just look like they're useful in some way, but I've never quite figured out what they could be used for. So I decided I'm going to pick my five best ideas for projects I can do with these old tool cases that actually seem useful. The first case that caught my attention was this old router bit case. My daughter has been asking for more art supplies and I figured if I made her an organizer for her papers and her markers, they may not end up getting scattered around the house. That might be wishful thinking, but you know, fathers can dream, right? The other thing this organizer does is it keeps the markers away from my two-year-old. She's been drawing on things recently. I ended up using some old baseboards that I had for the sides of this box and then just some scrap plywood glued to the face of it. It really didn't need to be anything too fancy, it just needed to be able to hold the papers and the markers in place. Once I was done with the art case, I was realizing how fragile the metal cases were, so I decided to stop using those and I turned my attention onto the plastic ones. So, there are two main categories of plastic cases that I noticed. One kind is made out of a polypropylene, and the other is made out of a high-density polyethylene. The polyethylene cases were very interesting because once you cut the inner shell out of the box, they usually have a ton of room left, and the box is only about half the weight. One thing to think about with the polyethylene cases is that the rigidity of the polyethylene case comes from the inner and the outer shell being connected. So once you cut out the inner shell of the box, it becomes a lot more flimsy. I would still consider them incredibly durable, but it's just something to note. The polypropylene cases, on the other hand, don't have an inner shell. Instead, their strength comes from a thicker outer shell and these important ridges on the side. The most important difference to remember about these is when you're done cutting all the extra nonsense out of these boxes, they are the strongest of all of the cases. The first case I decided to use after I cut out the center was this old Rockwell case. Since this was the biggest case I had, I decided to use it for some emergency supplies that I like to keep in the car. Having it in the case instead of the bags makes it a lot easier to move out of the way when using the car. It also keeps all of my supplies in one spot, which is nice. Now the next project I did turned out to be my favorite one of the day. I took this old DeWalt case and after cutting all of the non-important stuff out of it, I fit it with foam. Since this DeWalt case was made out of polypropylene, it was one of the most rigid ones I had, so I figured it would be really good for this project. And once I had the foam in place and the box was functioning, I cut the foam to fit a pistol. Since I decided I only wanted to use scraps for these projects, I decided I wanted to use these old floor mats of different colors, so when I cut the spot out for the pistol and the magazines, it gave you this really cool colored layer effect. I ended up with so much extra room in this case because of the way the case is designed that I could have added an entire other pistol into the top if I wanted to or a bunch of other magazines. I'm not sure what I want to do with this spot yet, so right now I'm just going to leave it blank. Okay, so the next project I did was to make a cutting board out of the scrap polyethylene I had left over. After I broke down the rest of the cases on the bandsaw, I layered the different colors of polyethylene so that I would create contrasting colors. Polyethylene melts pretty well at 350 degrees if you put it in for an hour and a half. Ow. When I took it out of the oven, I did my best to compress it to get rid of as many voids as possible. When it was cool, I decided I wanted to try a Damascus flip to show the pattern. This is the technique that blacksmiths like to use when forging Damascus steel because it gives you an interesting pattern when you're done. And I thought it would look really cool in plastic. After all of the pieces were flipped, I put it back in the oven at 350 and compressed it just like before. After waiting for it to cool again, I decided to go through and sand out as much of the imperfections as I could, and I think it turned out really cool. The cool thing about using polyethylene for a project like this is you don't have to put any finishes on it. The plastic itself is already food safe. I think this one turned out really cool. I want to try this again sometime to see if I can do a more complex pattern, but for right now I think this one turned out fantastic. I just love the way this one looks. My favorite part about having this cutting board in the shop is that it actually contains so many memories. 
The black parts inside this cutting board are actually from a tool case that I've had for over 20 years now. It was actually the first toolbox I ever got when I was about five years old. I actually remember opening up that box on Christmas and seeing all the tools that my dad had got me. So having it memorialized in a new project, something that's actually going to get used, I think is pretty cool. It turns out that these boxes, once you cut all the nonsense out of the inside, they can really be used to hold anything you want. You could fill these cases with all manner of things, such as a case full of money for those midnight trips into the Mojave Desert, your firstborn child, or this one I turned into a diaper bag. Actually, this one was intended to be a joke, but I actually like it. I think I'm going to start carrying this around. Don't judge me. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any ideas of more projects I can do with these tool cases, leave them in the comments. I really want to try and do this project again at some point and just see what I can come up with. If you enjoy this kind of content, let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. It's really helpful to get feedback from what people like to watch and what they don't. So if you like this kind of content, just let me know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you all next time.